So today we're going to be going over just some basic entry-level country guitar. The style, the sound is going to be based loosely off of what you just heard in that intro. These are licks and phrases that I kind of consider essential for, for a country guitarist's vocabulary. I've tailored this lesson so that if you're a beginner, we're going to break down each of these phrases, each of these licks to kind of their most basic format and then obviously learn that. And if you're more of an advanced or intermediate player, I will also be showing some variations on each of these licks so that you can use them in different contexts and it won't sound quite as repetitive. Uh, and then at the end, um, I've put together kind of a, a little backing track and I put together a little solo that incorporates all this stuff we're gonna learn so that you can see and hear how it all sounds within a musical context. Context. Anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into lick one. So the first lick we're gonna learn is kind of a pedal steel inspired lick. It's probably the most famous country sound when you think of country guitars, what everyone goes to. It's this. And there's a thousand different variations on it that we'll, we'll go over a few of those, but. What I'm doing there is I'm just, I'm out of my A, uh, A shape right here. And I'm going up from our root on this, the second fret here of our G string. And I'm bending up a whole step once I hammer onto that fourth fret. And we can add all sorts of different notes. We can right there. I'm, I'm bending up that whole step. And then I'm barring with my pinky on this fifth fret. We can do stuff like this, where I'm, and this is a little more advanced, but I'm bending up that whole step and holding it, and then I'm hitting that, that F sharp on my, my high, the second fret of my high E string here. So there's obviously a ton of variations with this, right? We can. We can just do the basic one. We can we can play it where we, we bar with our pinky on that fifth fret. We can we can add all sorts of different notes. We can we can make it more chicken picking style like that. We can alternate how we're bending that string. Um, so if you're more of an advanced player, those are all different kind of iterations. But if you're if you're new to this, uh, the main thing I would just work on at this point is getting that bend to sound clean and just some technique stuff there. I'm, I'm bending or I'm fretting with my, my ring finger, but I'm using the, the strength of my other two fingers behind that to help push that string up. And make sure when you, when you bend that note up, you want to compare it to a, a two frets up or a whole step and make sure that you're bending it in tune. One thing too, uh, and I've talked about this in, in other lessons, but obviously this is movable. When we're playing country guitars, you'll hear me say this all the time, we, we have to play the changes. We have to play the, the scale over whatever chord it is that the, the song is playing at that time. So if we're playing an A, and the band goes to D, we have to be able to find our D, and then we can move this same shape. And all I'm doing there is I'm looking for a target note, uh, and that helps me find the start of this lick. So for the, the, the key of D, right, I'm thinking, here is our, our D triad, if we know our caged uh, system. Our D triad right here, I can find that, that middle note of that triad is our D. So I can just play the same thing, uh, just moved up. If I want to do it in C, here's our C triad. One other thing to note as you're playing these licks um, is part of what gives me a country sound isn't just the notes I'm playing, it's also how I'm playing them. So right in that same shape with D, 
I'm normally I'm picking that bent note and then I'm using my finger here to pluck the strings. So if you can see there, I'm actually using my, my ring finger and my middle finger in tandem. Or if I'm doing something like this. Right, that's all coming just from my fingers. I'm not using the pick at all there. And that allows me to get that snappy sound that you associate with this style of, of playing that you can't achieve if you're just picking the notes. So if you've already got the basics of that down, uh, uh, a fun way to play it that involves just a little bit more uh, muscle and finger dexterity, we'll do this, I'll just show it in D. So same, same pattern here. I'm actually starting with it pre-bent. And then bending it back up. So, once again. So yeah, that's lick one and some variations. Let's go on and do lick two. So lick two kind of utilizes what, what tellies are famous for. Uh, we're going to be playing close to this bridge and getting this classic telly sound. So all I'm doing there, uh, once again, we're, we're starting this in the key of A. And we have our A here, obviously the, the open A string. We also have our fifth fret A here on the E string. So I'm, I'm bending up from the fourth fret to the fifth fret. And then using that uh, kind of back and forth with the, the fretted fourth fret that I'm bending. And that open A string. And I, I talk about moving licks. Um, obviously, this one's using open strings, so we're kind of limited into in how we can use it. But it works great in the key of A because we also have D, which we just move up a string set. We play the exact same things, and now we're playing in the key of B. Obviously there you heard I went to E, which is also one of the common chords if we're playing in the key of A. What's partly responsible for giving me that sound is where I'm picking. If I was to play the same, same exact notes but pick up here, it just doesn't have that same growl that you associate with the telly when you play back here. So that's lick two, uh, pretty pretty easy one. Most commonly going to be used over that A and that D chord. So lick three sounds like this. That's another super common country sounding phrase. Uh, you'll hear it all the time in bluegrass as well. I'm just starting on our a root. In this case, uh, this is I'm starting that one in D, and I'm just kind of walking up, adding that that minor third to major third. And when I play it fast, so I don't have to pick all the notes, I'll slide there. And then I'll normally pick this twice, but then I'll pull off back to that. And then I'll pick that high octave again. And obviously this is also very movable, right? We're starting kind of out of our power chord shape, right, if we're playing a D. If you want to play it in E. And we can do this in the open strings as well if we think about our A power chord being like this. Uh, the open string is taken care of for us, right? So we can just play it. We can do it in E. And another thing, if you're a little bit more advanced, is we can start adding in double stops to this, right? there to, to change things up is I'm, I'm starting it the same way but instead of just picking that single note up high I'm actually barring and then like we talked about I'm gonna use my my fingers here to chicken pick the D and the G strings 
So now that you've learned licks two and three, something fun that we can do is roll kind of from lick two into lick three. So it sounds something like this uh, in the key of D. Or in the key of A. And all I'm doing there is I'm starting with that bridge picking. And then just going right into that, that third lick we learned. So something I just want to touch on quickly, I'm using all these licks intentionally uh, in order to not just teach the vocabulary of country guitar, but also to, to teach the playing style that is necessary when, when playing this. A lot of what we're playing is identical to what you'd hear over different styles like the blues or rock, uh, but what makes it sound country per se is not just the notes being played, but also how it's being picked. Uh, like I talked about, I'm using my pick and my fingers for a lot of this. And if this is new to you, um, I've kind of intentionally built these licks around phrases that require you to, to chicken pick. And that's a, a, a big part of learning this style. So if, it, if it's new to you, um, it's certainly going to take some time getting used to. Start slow and just build up getting that repetition using the fingers and the pick in tandem. Because in order to play this style, it's, it's kind of a... A necessary thing to learn. So just wanted to throw that in there. Let's get on to lick four, I think we're on. So lick four sounds something like this. And while that might sound kind of simple or repetitive at first, there's actually some, some good practice stuff in there as far as getting dead notes and chicken picking to work together. Um, like I said before, if, if you just play the notes without focusing on all the little nuanced stuff, it might not sound quite right. So to break down what I'm doing, we're, we're doing this in the key of A, um, and I'm using that, that chicken pick, and I'm, I'm plucking, I'm barring on my fifth fret, and hammering on from that minor third, which is this note, to our major third, which is this note. And I'm, if you'll, if you'll listen, I'm adding in a dead note, which all a dead note is, is it's a note that you're muting, but still picking. Right, so th these are all dead notes. So if you listen there, I'm adding in that dead note before and after I play up here on the seventh fret. And when you play it faster, it really helps in developing and enhancing kind of that country sound. So some, some variations on that lick, right? We talk all the time about country guitar going from the one chord to the four chord to the five chord. And this is a perfect place to do it. Uh, if we're in this shape, right, our A major bar chord, the band then goes to the four chord, in this case, the D. Well, we're playing here. And this, this seventh fret bar is right out of that D. Right, and we can do the same thing starting with that little hammer on, add in some dead notes, but then come up here and bar on the, the ninth fret for our E. And then resolve back to the one chord. And this is obviously movable as well. We want to do this in, if we're playing in the key of G. playing in the key of E, right? We can, we can do it anywhere that we can fret kind of this bar chord shape. So that is lick four, let's move on to the final one. So lick five incorporates yet another very classic country sound, uh, and this is gonna be moving up in intervals. So there we're, we're moving up an interval of, these are, they're six degrees apart within the scale. Once again, this is in the key of A, and it's I'm playing notes out of this shape here, and I'm sliding in. So I'm on the sixth fret and the fifth fret here, and then I'm just moving up to both notes being on the seventh fret. And then you can move up two more frets so both notes are on the ninth fret. can obviously work back down. And the, the cool thing about this, if you're a little bit more advanced, is start working on, on sliding in. Um, 
something like that, or between these two, that seventh and ninth fret, we can add in what is kind of like a passing tone on our eighth fret, which by itself, those, those notes don't sound really good over A. Right, they kind of clash, but when you play them quickly in between, right, we can do something like that, use them just as a passing note to get from one to the other, and it sounds really good in that context. So if you're just starting out, just focus on, you can do where you pick them together, or you can do it where you pick and then pluck. Uh, and then, yeah, mess around with different variations of that. Obviously, once again, very movable. Anywhere that we're playing this shape, we're doing it in the key of G, we just... We're doing it in the key of D. Uh, yeah, back to A. We can even do it in E using this open string. So it's it's a very accessible lick, regardless of what key we're playing in. We can we can access those patterns, those shapes, and play this one. Another quick variation on this, if you're a little bit more advanced, is you can start working on bending that that top note up a little bit. Something like that. So now let's put all of this together into something a little bit more musical. Uh, I've put together a backing track in the key of A, and uh, I've written just a little solo that uses all of the stuff we just talked about. Before we start though, the, the solo, it's in the key of A, and it's gonna be playing from the, the A chord to the D chord to the E chord, which if you haven't heard me explain this before, just really quickly, that's a, a super common pattern called a one four five where Regardless of what key we're starting in, if we go up from the one chord, which is where we're starting, in this case A, we go up four degrees of that scale, A, B, C, D, our, our fourth note is a D and our fifth note is an E. So this is just following a super common pattern when it comes to playing country guitar. Um, you hear it all the time in other styles as well. But that's kind of what what the, the, the backing track is going to be going over. And then, yeah, I'll throw these licks all in there and hopefully make something musical out of it. just talk quickly about what I did in that solo. Obviously I'm just using these licks and these variations that I've just been talking about to kind of build this solo, right? So we're starting in the key of A. I come up to the D and do the same thing. And I'm kind of doing that, that bending and pre-bending and releasing. And then when I came back to the A, Right, I'm, I'm doing that faster, just repeated plucking. Then when I came up to the E, and if you're, if you're pretty new to guitar, this is gonna be a little bit of a stretch for you. Um, it, it does take some finger dexterity and some finger muscle to get that. So if, if you can't quite get that under your fingers, just play the traditional. Right, just do that classic bend. Or you can just do something like that. Uh, and then when the song comes around again and we go back to the A, I'm, I'm coming to this lick. 
right? And I'm working on those dead notes now. When it went when it went to the D, if you noticed, I did exactly what I talked about uh, earlier, where I'm just hanging out on this this seventh fret here now. And then for for when it goes to that five chord, that E, I'm still starting on that that hammer on. And then like we talked about using those passing tones, I kind of just kept that bar and and picked my way up from the the seventh fret to the ninth fret. And then I did a, a classic lick that resolves from that five chord, which is our E here, back to our A. Right, and then once again, I'm, pay attention to those dead notes. Uh, and then when that part ended, uh, the the pattern kind of started over again, and we're we're moving on to these these bridge picks, right? And I think I added a little bit of variety in there, a little bit different than how exactly I taught it in the earlier portion, right? I added a, just a few more notes from the scale there. And then after we did that one in D, right, I'm incorporating that lick we talked about. And then it, I did the same thing in E. But this time, I'm walking down from our, our E note here playing the same same string on the first fret and then that open D note which kind of gives it that tension that that makes us want to hear the A note again right that E7 wants us to resolve back to our, our one chord so I'm, I'm doing that From there, we were back to the the A. So I, I worked on this this uh, interval leg. When the song goes to the D, I'm using the actually the exact same intervals, but I'm playing them out of this the same D triad shape that we talked about earlier. And then when it goes back to the that A to E to A. I kind of slid all the way up. I skipped that middle one. Then I went back and then I walked back down like that. So that's all I got for you in this lesson. Uh, I, I'm going to include the same backing track that I just played over uh, at the end of this video. So if you want to kind of practice that solo or practice playing these licks over some chord changes on your own, obviously that's available to you. If the backing track is a little bit too fast still, uh, there is a feature in settings on YouTube where you can slow the video down. So you can do kind of custom settings anywhere. I think it's in increments of 10%. So certainly a feature to use if, if something's a little bit too quick, slow it down to 70, 80% and, and try playing along at that speed. But yeah, that's all I have for, for these licks. Hopefully these, these phrases, these ideas are useful. Hopefully you guys can take these, learn all the variations and run with them. Um, like I said, if you're a beginner, just kind of learn the, the basic forms of them. And then as you get them under your fingers, come back, revisit this video and learn some of the variations. And if you're already more of an advanced player, hopefully you're able to still take some away from, away from this. Um, anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, good luck out there. We will see you all in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.